Okay, I know I always get excited for the Fusion 360 updates, but this one is one of my favorites so far. All right, there is a lot to cover, so I'm gonna start off with one of my favorite enhancements in this update, Ruled Surface. This is an extremely versatile tool for numerous modeling situations. I use Ruled Surface for surface modeling from scratch, creating cutting tools, defining drafted angles on complex surfaces, and so much more. With this tool, simply select an edge or chain of edges and use the length or angle manipulator or input to define your surface. For those more advanced users, you will be delighted to know you can define the surface based on the normal direction, tangent to the surface, or based on a defined direction to get your desired outcome. If you're making plastic parts, ruled surface will be one of your best friends. But this next enhancement might be even more exciting. When making plastic parts, you'll want to start many designs by defining a parting line where the top and bottom of your plastic parts meet, and use that as the center to draft from. Now, within the new draft tool, there is a parting line draft mode. This lets you define your parting line with a sketch, surface, or plane. In this case, we can use the spline as our draft tool and draft five degrees from that line to start defining the overall shape of our injection molded plastic part. This is even parametric, so as design changes are made throughout the product development process, Obviously, the parting line draft will update. All right, I know you've heard me talk about edit in place a lot in the last couple of updates. This was a technology preview so we could get it into your hands early to test rather than hide our secret sauce. But now this tech is ready for prime time and is now graduated out of preview. Not only did we fix many of the bugs reported for many of you who tested it early, but we added the ability to use edit in place in direct modeling mode. I now use edit in place in my everyday workflow all the time. Make sure to click the link in the description for an entire video playlist on how to effectively work in teams using edit in place by the master Rob Cohey. All right, I know I've said this before, but the drawings team has been consistently delivering enhancements in every update. And trust me, there's more to come. This month, they've made the drawings environment behave a little bit more like Fusion 360. Previously, you had to click a lot of handles to move things, but now you can simply click anywhere in the drawing view and drag to move the view. This has been updated for views, notes, and sketches. Now, on to my favorite update in drawings. Previously, you had to know the units of a drawing when creating the drawing, but what happened if you wanted to change inches to millimeters? Well, now you could switch the units between millimeters and inches at any time during the drafting process. Yes, finally we did it. In addition, we can now change the label for section and detail views. Yes, we understand the devil is in the detail views. In the last update, we added basic sketch tools to drawings. And in this update, we took it one step further by allowing you to change the line width of lines and arcs and arrows while sketching and drawing. Finally, when creating drawings for assembly, sometimes I just want to take what is visible on the screen and use it for a drawing. Previously, you had to uncheck a lot of boxes and wait for loading, but now you could simply just choose to create a drawing out of only what's visible in the design environment. Alright, for those longtime Fusion 360 users, you may have noticed we have removed your name from the top bar and replaced it with either your avatar or initials in the top right. Make sure to update your avatar in your account to have it appear. This next update is taking Fusion 360 even further globally. Now Fusion 360 has been translated in both French and Italian. Since I could barely even speak English, let alone a different language, let me have two of my good friends welcome in their native tongues. È ora di progettare. Fusion 360 è finalmente disponibile in italiano. C'est le moment de concevoir. Fusion 360 est enfin disponible en français. Thanks Ale and Paolo. I'm excited to grow our footprint even further globally. Okay, let's switch over to some of the enhancements coming to generative design. First, we are dropping a new way to purchase with something we are calling the generative design extension. Based on your feedback, you now have the option to pay as you go when using generative design or subscribe on a monthly or annual basis that will give you unlimited access to generative solves and outcome downloads. Now, whether you're using generative design for a project or if you plan on adopting it into your everyday workflow, Fusion 360 gives you the flexibility to use thought leading technology to meet your needs. If you are looking to get up and running with Fusion 360's generative design, make sure to check out our new self-paced learning courses to walk you through the essentials to master this new technology. 
Recently, we have added the ability to find materials for a study based on manufacturing method. Now in this update, we have marked all the materials that will give you costing information powered by a priori's costing engine for your generative outcomes. Even more, when examining the outcomes, Fusion 360 estimates the piece part cost as well as the fully burdened cost, which includes the setup cost amortized over the volume specified in the setup. Well, that's it for me for the June 2020 update. Make sure to check out both the manufacturing and electronics updates for Fusion 360. Hello and welcome to the June 2020 update to Fusion 360 Manufacturing. This round will kick things off with some updates to the tool library in Fusion 360. In addition to getting a beautiful new interface, the new tool library has many of the old features we know and love, as well as several major enhancements. Starting with some housekeeping. Showing and reordering columns is now behind the settings gear icon. Click on it and you can check columns to show them or uncheck to hide them, and easily drag to reorder the list, which will update the column order. Filters are now found on the right side of the dialog, and commands like edit, duplicate, renumber tools, and more are found on the top. In terms of usability, you can now copy a holder and then select multiple tools to apply that holder to, significantly streamlining the process of adding or changing tool holders. The addition I'm most excited for in the new tool library is the ability to store multiple cutting parameter presets. You can edit, add, and rename these presets directly in the tool library. These parameters don't only include feed and speed values, but can also include step down and step over as well when the boxes are checked. Then when creating a toolpath, you can select your preset of choice from the dropdown in the tool tab or select custom to make edits to that specific toolpath. To help you get the most out of these new enhancements, we've also added a Haas tooling library to the online tool libraries. Download the library for Fusion 360, import it, and it's already pre-populated with cutting parameters for different materials and cut types, pulled from Haas cutting data PDFs. There is also a live link that goes directly to the Haas website, where you can purchase the tool, making it easy to restock or find more detailed information on that tool. In FFF Additive, we made some improvements to the print setting library, including filters for layer height and filament diameter, to help you more quickly sort through your available print settings. If you're looking for more detail on setting up your own printer, check out the live stream linked in the upper corner, where Thomas Stock takes you through the details of FFF. We also added gyroid infill, which mimics a natural structure found in butterfly wings and cell membranes and has an incredibly high strength at low densities and is especially resistant to shear stress. On the turning side, we added an option for even step downs to the profile roughing operation. This is most useful on parts with diameter steps where it's optimal to evenly distribute passes between each step. Even step downs helps improve surface finish and part quality with predictable tool deformation, consistent chip formation, and equal heat dissipation across cuts. For diameter steps, it breaks the geometry into regions at each step and then calculates the even step down by region, such that it doesn't exceed the maximum step down parameter in the passes tab. If we compare to a profile roughing operation with even step downs unchecked, there are some awkward areas where the toolpath doesn't align to the geometry. For more complex geometry, the regions are defined at inflection points or tapered faces. For more detail on even step downs and how we handle various geometries, check out the blog post linked in the description. In probing, we expanded the range of geometry we support for work coordinate system and geometry probing. Now you can select a partial bore or boss to generate a three point probe on the arc. When used with work coordinate system probing, this will shift the work coordinate system using the center of the partial boss or bore. In probe geometry, this will verify the size and position of the partial boss or bore. We also added support for angled surface probing. This allows you to probe vertical faces angled in the X or Y direction. When used with WCS probing, this will rotate the WCS using a G68 or a C-axis rotation. Note the G68 may be a paid option and will need to be enabled on your machine. Refer to your machine's manual for more information. 
When used with probe geometry, this will verify the angle of the vertical face relative to the X or Y axis. Finally, manual inspection is coming to public preview. Check the manual inspection box in Preferences, Preview Features to get access, and then watch the video linked in the upper corner to see a detailed tutorial from Richard on how to use manual inspection to create inspection plans, record measurement results, and generate shareable inspection reports, all within Fusion 360. That's it for this time. Be sure to check out the What's New for design and engineering, and of course, let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe for more Fusion 360 videos. Cheers.